also i have to talk about she explains to her to riley oh albert's got cancer and he's dying albert's sick he has cancer and it's spread he's gonna die and riley goes oh no he'll be fine yeah he just literally do yoga just yoga and, and eat raw, raw food, food. Miranda will sing closely to me. There's a way to fully regenerate his body in six months. No dangerous procedures, just yoga and raw food. <laughs> she even says he's got three weeks to live. Well, after two weeks of yoga and raw food, man. Yeah. He's fine. He's fine. He'll be fine. He's great. Oh, welcome back to the 148th episode. Good, bad, or bad, bad. Show watch travel movies. Let me get you too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo. Joined once again. <laughs> I'm scared of by Brian a right moderately now. intimidated Kyle who knows that this movie I have things to say about it. <laughs> so for the first time in a long time, cheers. That's, that's right, that's right. Just... <laughs> nope, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna nurse it. We're gonna nurse it. <laughs> so uh what the fuck did I say everything? I don't remember. The movie is 2016's Amazing Ape. We're gonna get you out of here. He's a way to make the world a better place. Find this animal before he hurts somebody. I mean, it's the only hope this godforsaken world has. Stop! Brian, how did we... <laughs> <laughs> Right. That was unexpected <laughs> and frightening. I had to get that one out of the way early. Uh, I thought if I released it early, get that out early, and maybe it'll help um, me pull it back a little bit for the rest of this. Brian, you uh, this was brought to your attention. Yeah, so I was looking through. Uh, we're, we're coming up with movies. I was scrolling through, and I went to Patreon, uh, which is where I often go because they're paying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'll look through those recommendations first, usually. Uh, and literally, the most recent message we had the top move they were like hey check out this movie and i looked at it and i was like this looks wild didn't really look at what it was about or anything just saw like a, a kid with cancer befriends an ape or a chimpanzee and they learn what it means and they, to yeah. have courage and or hope. something yeah something like that i was like uh but then like i scrolled through it and i was like oh it looks bad like yeah. it looks like a uh, right up our alley uh and then i watched it and i want to fist fight this movie guys <laughs> I want to fist fight not only this movie, but everybody in this movie, including the seven-year-old or whatever the fuck that plays the main character. There's no easy way to say this. He knows he's sick. It's a rare form of cancer. Three to six weeks. I feel responsible for his sickness. There's a way to fully regenerate his body in six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So this movie, Amazing Ape, The Amazing Ape, whatever, uh, written and directed by... A guy, a la Cher. <laughs> yep. Known by one name. Singular name, Giuliano. Yes. Apparently, he was on a reality show called Next Action Star, and I thought he was a contestant at first. Mm -hmm. a terrible looking reality show, by the way, from like the early 2000s. <laughs> it looks really bad. We are here in the Howard Fine Acting Studio, and your coach for the day is Howard Fine himself. Yes. Howard Fine is considered one of the top coaches in the country. But I scrubbed through like three episodes, couldn't find him, found out later, or then looked at the credits. He's credited as Celebrity Chef. Yes. And I was like, oh, so he must have been on like an episode as like a chef. Did some more Googling. He's billed as, quote, LA's raw food pioneer. Today we're in Santa Monica, California. To learn what the raw food buzz is really all about with one of the most celebrated raw food chefs in the world. Uh, so he's into bullshit. This yeah. guy. <laughs> I, I looked through a couple of his uh, you find his videos? YouTube. Yes. It's insane. Yes. Uh, the raw food diet is a way to stay energized, young, and healthy. So the idea is, you know, feeling good daily. So this guy is like a raw food guru. So what's so bad about cooked food? I mean, what's the difference? Every living creature on the planet is a raw fooder. They love, you know, everybody is a raw fooder. Plants, animals, insects, microscopic organisms. And I love, in one of the interviews I saw with them, like they're like at his restaurant or something like that. And one of their interviews with them, 
<laughs> he says he's like making some food or whatever. He's actually making food that's in the movie. We'll get there. <laughs> but he's making some food and he says, don't trust the man, trust the mom. Mother Nature. Don't trust the man, trust the mom. Mother Nature. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna hate this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking hate this guy. Uh, this, this guy, guy so is much. a, uh, let's just say, organics purist. Uh, he is not even, like, beyond that, he's a raw food dude, which... <laughs> Which we'll get into what that is because it it comes up a lot in the film. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he's into raw food and like every crunchy possible thing you could possibly imagine, um, in a way that's very problematic. Humans are the only species which eats cooked food, and you know humans are the only species which needs doctors and dentists. Um, everybody else is running around in perfect shape, but we're sick and wondering what's wrong. Um, and as soon as I saw that doing this intro before I even started watching the movie and then I remembered that the kid had cancer I was like oh no this is not gonna be good this is not gonna be good this is gonna be really bad you take your medication Simon says don't take drugs we need real food mom it comes from the earth or a tree uh, the movie kicks in and the opening credit or like the, the production credits and I love he has his own production company just called Raw Films oh god yep <laughs> yeah Yep. It's like, boy, that could be two different things. That could be two very different things. Yep. But it's the, uh, it's the, it's the, it's actually the, it's the least interesting one. Uh, <laughs> the more upsetting one. We are, we are headed to the Congo or something? Before we get there, we get this intro mm. where we get a voiceover and we get like this montage of like chimpanzees and yes. stuff. Some stories you hear about apes are frightening. And this voiceover, and I gotta talk about this, because the voiceover, one of the lines says, and they're talking about like chimpanzees, and the, the, the basic message is like, oh, people are, media has taught us to be afraid of, of apes and chimpanzees and stuff, but actually they're great. And I'm, but because one of the, the, the line is something along the lines of, you have people like King Kong and Charlton Heston telling us you should be afraid of apes. We have things like King Kong and Charlton Heston telling you all the reasons that you should be afraid of them. And that they're going to destroy the world. That they're going to destroy the world. Okay. And I was like, that was somebody who did not read fucking Planet of the Apes. I was like, bro! <laughs> I, I haven't watch seen it. Yes, I was like, I have not seen Planet of the Apes since I was a little kid. I do not think you understood Planet of the yeah. Apes. Like, the humans yes. destroyed the planet. Exactly. I was the like, apes rose up because of it. <laughs> exactly. I was like, bro, that's literally the opposite <laughs> point of the Planet of the Apes, which doesn't, was again, not a good sign that this guy's media literacy is like <laughs> as low as could possibly be. I was like, oh yeah, Charlton Heston says the apes are scary. It's like, oh my God. Charlton Heston telling you all the reasons that you should be afraid of them and that they're going to destroy the world. Cook your food, idiot. You don't understand movies. Cool, great, awesome. Really excited to watch your movie now. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my God. Uh, so then we go to the, yes, we go to like the the deep uh, jungle somewhere. We don't know, you know. Um, and we get like some sweet music and some stock footage shots of the jungle or whatever. And then we cut in and we're introduced to our villain. Yes. Uh, uh, Sinclair? Sinclair, Sinclair is his name, yes. Yep. Hey, boys. All right. Give us the money. Money? You want the money? We got your money. You want the money? Yeah, I got the money. Go on, make it quick. See this? And he's there to buy a, a, a monkey from some poachers or an a chimpanzee. We don't. I, we never actually see this one. It's not really important. Mm -hmm. um, but he buys a monkey or chimpanzee or an ape or something from these poachers, and then we move on immediately. Like that's all we get. All right, boys, relax. And also, I was like, you know, if this movie <laughs> were a real movie, <laughs> that this character would be played by Danny McBride. <laughs> Yes, because he totally is like a, a poor man's Danny McBride. Yes. It was amazing. So then he it's one scene where he buys a, a monkey and leaves. Mm. And then I don't know if you noticed this, but we get some more like flying like uh, like helicopter shots yeah. of the jungle. Well, like half this fucking movie is establishing shots. Yes. But did you notice in this one after that scene there <laughs> the camera is flying back along a river? <laughs> and at the very end of the shot, you see a bird flying and the birds flying backwards. <laughs> Because they, oh, no. they reversed the footage. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> the bird 
<laughs> is flying backwards. Wow, okay. It's amazing. I was like, oh, a fucking A. <laughs> then we cut to LA, 1997. 1997? This is a period piece, yeah. but it's also not in any conceivable but, way. Because like, the narrator is the adult version of the yes. kid. Yes, yes. But they did. They like went to. Sandlot. They went to zero lengths to make this look like 1997. Other than there being a flip phone a couple times, mm -hmm. and at one point, I literally their for, vehicles are kind of are they period specific. Yeah, I don't even remember cars like, that much uh, in the movie to be honest. Well, the the the, the, sci the Air Force chick hers is like a, a red. Land Rover from way back in the, or some sort of Jeep. Take your word. And for then it. the uh, the mom has like a a. a, a Rover or Land is it called Land Rover? That is a brand of car, yes. Yeah. That looks old as hell. I'll Good take your word so. for it. I I I completely forgot that and well there's a moment later where I was like, oh my god, that's right, it's 1997. We'll get there in a minute. I'm here at the Food and Drug Administration in Washington, DC, where Swedish and now American scientists have discovered that a cancer-causing chemical known as acrylamide is in practically all processed foods. But anyway, so we're now we're in LA 1997 and we cut into uh, it, just stock music over everything in this movie for like the first 20 minutes. Uh, we're now at the U.S. Air Force Chimpanzee Habitat. I guess that's a thing. Well, it is a thing. We find out because they're space monkeys, basically. Mm. They were chimps, and they're not monkeys. I'm going to keep saying monkeys because the movie does that all the time, yeah. but uh, I know they're apes. Um, chimpanzees are at least uh and so they we cut into this place and we're introduced to riley who's like one of our main characters and she is a uh, a, a, a like a primate scientist or whatever mm -hmm. um and she's there working with these chimpanzees and she has a tour there and she's how, like how do we know she's a scientist though well she's wearing a lab coat cover. oh and and there's books next to the display as yes well? there's there's just a bookcase right next to this this ape enclosure yes. this is a random bookcase <laughs> I don't even know if she's wearing a lab coat. I think she is, but um, yeah, there's a random science bookcase. Uh, but yeah, she's like a she's a she's a primate specialist or whatever, and she's explaining about how smart chimpanzees are. Simon's actually capable of combining words to identify new objects. For example, referring to a swan as a water bird, and Alka Seltzer as a listen drink. And she tells this story that I was like, that cannot be true. She so says uh, chimpanzees can even fly spaceships, and I was like. Chimpanzees can even fly spaceships. That's right. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think I don't. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I don't think so. And she goes on to tell the story about Enzo or uh, e e Enos or whatever, who was yes. like one of the first chimps in space. That back in the '60s when we were testing stuff, NASA shot a bunch of chimpanzees <laughs> up into space. On November 29th, 1961, Simon's grandfather, five-year-old Enos, was launched into space. Horrifying, whatever. But she's like, and they <laughs> to put my mind in a chimpanzee back in the day, being like, "Hey, we're gonna shoot you into space." It's wild. But she says they did. The, the chimpanzee was flying the spaceship, mm. and they they were like prompting it, and and they were using electric shocks. And whenever it would do something, they would wrong. It would they would shock it. Due to a malfunction in the capsule, Enos was given electric shocks for every correct maneuver he made. Instead of changing his behavior, he endured the shocks and performed the tasks he knew were right. And they go, and they were shocking it even though it was doing the right thing. And even though they were shocking it, it kept doing the right thing because it knew that was the right thing to do. And the implication is that it was flying the spaceship. Chimpanzees can even fly spaceships. Enos was given electric shocks for every correct maneuver he made. Yes. And they were like, do this. And the monkeys, or the chimpanzees, like, no, I know how to fly this spaceship, motherfuckers. <laughs> well, that, I, or it sounds like they're doing a test. That's what in it was. In which case, why were you wasting millions and millions of dollars in rocket fuel, the launch, and all that when you could just replicate it in a fucking lab somewhere? Well, I, dude, I, I can't even begin to know. I don't even begin to know what was going on with the. With, with the but so. To me, it felt like the implication was that they were literally like it was flying the spaceship because mm. she says it can fly. Chimpanzees can fly spaceships. I googled this. That is not what was happening. What happened was they did send this this chimp up, and they were just doing a test in space. And I think the idea is like cognitive a bit, like they were testing like in okay. orbit, like yeah. cognitive whatever. And they were doing a test where it had to like pull a lever based on a, a shape that it saw. And apparently, the test malfunctioned and was shocking the chimpanzee. 
even when it gave the right answer. But it kept giving the right answer because it knew that was the right answer, even though it was getting shocked. And the movie's thing is like, and that was... <laughs> they were torturing the chimpanzee and it knew it was flying the spam ship right damn and them. it's like that's not really what was going i mean it was still weird and kind of ter terrible but it was not what the movie says it was like at all it was mm. not flying the spaceship whatever chimpanzees can even fly spaceships that's right uh and then her dad shows up and it's like get these civilians out of here and th this is starting to feel very uh incredible hulk yes uh john is it who who was wasn't the the Eric Bana one? What about it? Was it Sam Elliott or was it William Hurt? Oh, I don't remember. It's been so I haven't seen okay. that movie since it came out. <laughs> I think it was William Hurt. Yeah. Maybe, who knows? Yeah. Point being is it feels like that. Yeah. Um and but it's our dad. Uh mm -hmm. he's he's like top military brass or whatever, and he's like, We gotta get we're you're getting rid of these chimps or whatever. You know how illegal it is for non military personnel to bring civilians on base? People need to see Simon and witness his intelligence if chimps are ever gonna get the rights that they deserve. Yeah. Or get me court martialed. Dad. They're basically just introducing that he's like the military guy, she's like the scientist with the heart of gold or whatever, and that's that's the whole setup of their characters. I'm gonna get you guys out of this place, I promise. Just hang in there. And then we cut and are introduced to Albert and his mom. Yes. <laughs> Your mom answers to me. <laughs> And I love their introduction is just her blowing smoke in this but child's here's face. Here's the thing. We never see cigarettes in this movie. <laughs> we never see cigarettes in this movie. Yes, we do. Is, yes. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was no. kind of such a way. Okay. No, we see, we see several cigarettes. I'm probably very wrong. <laughs> we see her smoke cigarettes at least once or twice. Once in the car, we absolutely see her like okay. holding a cigarette. Um, but she like, yeah, she like blows smoke in this kid's face. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, sorry, an aerosol like yeah. airspray. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey, sorry about that. Here's chemicals in your face. Yeah. yeah sorry. Sorry for well, the cigarette chemicals. Here's an aerosol. And that's what's so weird about this movie is like, so you think like, oh, because they're very intentional about like, she's like smoking around this little kid. Mm -hmm. She's like spraying like aerosols around him. Uh, and we, then we cut and he's like drinking soda. Albie, come on. The movie's premise, thesis, is not that he got cancer from secondhand smoke. No. He got cancer from, from eating cooked food? food. Just cooked food. Just, co Just because somebody says that it's food doesn't make it so. If you eat poison all day long, <sighs> Riley, it's you'll get sick and you'll stay sick. And if you want to get better, don't turn to knives and radiation and drugs. Just stop taking the poison. That's, so the raw food thing is literally, and we'll get into it here in a second, is literally that if you cook food, it makes it cancer, it makes it carcinogenic and gives you cancer. Literally cook it in, in no matter what the food is, you, you, you saute some mm -hmm. broccoli and some olive oil, that's cancer, baby. You're giving yourself, it's, <laughs> I cannot stress enough how much I want to fight this movie. <laughs> it misunderstands everything about everything ever and I hate it so much. You know they make plastic? The heat of oil. It's the exact way that humans eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, but are you a raw food pioneer? Uh, no. But because, yeah, because we get a news story where they're like, F the FDA discovers that something in all cooked, or no, it's a newspaper, and it, mm -hmm. the headline says, the FDA discovers that, that something in all cooked food is a carcinogen. And, like, there's truth in the fact, from what I understand, <clears throat> that, like, lots of things are carcinogens, including, like, when you cook food, there can be things in it that are carcinogenic. But in the levels that means absolutely not, like it just does not matter. Mm. It just does. It truly does not matter. <laughs> like it does not give you cancer eating like cooked food. I death by a thousand cuts. I will fucking fight this movie. <laughs> I'm just here to see Dr. Keller for my test results. I'm not here for treatment. And since that does say treatment form, so then they we find out they take him to the doctor and he has a rare form of okay. cancer. Why in God's name does this doc, okay, so this doctor is like giving a prognosis and everything, right? Hey Albert, go see the nurse. I think she has some candy for you. Your mother and I need to talk. He knows he's sick. Mm hmm Why was this in an ER room? I don't know. It's definitely an ER room, it looks like. And yeah, he's just in there, because it's like the only place they could. Oh, by the way, this, this doctor who keeps showing up, his doctor, discount uh, Oscar Isaac, 100%. Oh, really? I didn't see that. I'll put up, 
I didn't, I didn't get that, but maybe. Sure, I'll take your okay. word for it. He's only in a few scenes, and my favorite thing is is, is his scene at the end of the movie. We'll, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, he's like he's got some rare form of cancer or something, Carsa, whatever. It says he has three weeks to three live. Three to six weeks. Three to six weeks. He has healing sarcoma. It's a rare form of cancer. Three to six weeks. Three to six weeks. You realize weeks. how much organ failure this kid would have at it, three to six weeks? He's like fine right now. Like yes. he seems fine. He's got a little weird color on his face, but I could not tell if that was the fucking terrible color grading or this or or he didn't like, have like makeup. Kidneys and liver have got to be fucked at this point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, three to six weeks to live and uh or something like that. And they're like, we need to do radiation. Although radiation is only a futile option at this stage. It'll need to be explored. And the kid's like, I don't want radiation, cause I'm Make, I hate it. Makes it'll my make, hair fall out. Yeah, he says it'll make his hair fall out. Uh, radiation may too. I don't know. It depends, I'm sure. Radiation? That makes your hair fall out. The other kids already think I'm weird. We cut back to Sinclair, and he's like taking the chimps somewhere. Um, he is getting them from the, the Air Force base and taking them somewhere. And it took me so long to figure out what this guy's like role in this movie was. Turns out he like owns the pharmacy company? Yes. yes. I think... What exactly are your plans for these chimps? I do research. What kind of research? Well, I run a pharmaceutical testing facility. He's a weird looking dude to own a pharmacy company, I guess yes. is my point, because he looks he, like... He looks like a game warden. Yes, he looks like he should be hunting dinosaurs on Isla Nubar. Like, he's, he's fucking like... Clever girl. Yeah, he's that <laughs> character, and, but he's like a pharmaceutical, like, CEO. I, it's very strange. I don't mm. understand it at all. Um, but he's taking the... Um, he's taking the chimps somewhere, and he, as he's removing them... Uh, the military is selling them to him because they can't keep them anymore or whatever. Uh, and I love the, the military guys having a conversation with him. And he's like, what are you going to do with the chimps? And he's like, oh, you know, pharmaceutical yeah, testing. And he's like, you're a vivisector. And it's like, is that oh, okay? okay? Sure. You're a vivisector. No, no. These are special animals. They deserve better than to be in some torture lab. But, but these me. are my chimps. All right. I want my chimps, Colonel. Uh, but Riley's very upset about this, obviously, because she likes the chimps. There's 142 of them. We see Two, two, I think, like yeah. the entire film, but there's apparently yep. 100, 142 of them. Where are you going to house 142 chimps? <sighs> so they're, they, they're taking the chimps to the pharmaceutical company. Then we cut back to Albert's home, and I got to talk about this briefly. <laughs> We're introduced to the, his love interest, because, yes, the six-year-old or whatever has a love interest in this fucking movie. Okay. He's at home. This girl comes running in their front door and she comes running around the corner and hides. What's going on? Why aren't you in school? And she says, they're forcing everyone, all the kids and teachers to get a shot. So I escaped. They were forcing all the kids, the teachers, so everyone to get a shot. I hid then I escaped. And I was like, oh no, Kyle, no. It's an anti-vax movie, too. Fuck me. Well, you know, pure nature. Pure nature. Pure Fuck role. me, man. Pure role pioneer. Don't trust the man. Trust the mom. Mother nature. Uh, Gosh, I have my pants. Genius, huh? Albert, help me get off these jeans. What? Don't ever do that again. <laughs> and it's like one little brief scene just to introduce his friend character. Um, then we cut back to the chimp lab, and she's making food for... <laughs> The yes, and th this is like the raw diet She's, thing, right? Yes. She's making, she goes, you want some tacos to the chimp or whatever? <laughs> How about tacos? And she makes these tacos, and not even kidding, the one clip of this guy cooking food in his restaurant mm -hmm. that I saw, he makes the exact same yeah. tacos. <laughs> We're gonna use a purple cabbage leaf. So at least this is a holder. This is the medium as it's called today. But we are definitely going to use cheeses. Our first cheese we are going to use is just a little basil, walnut, pesto. Gar it's basil, walnut, garlic, and salt in a food processor for a couple minutes. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> from this fucking movie. Oh, would, they're not tacos, by the way. They're a piece of red cabbage mm -hmm. with avocado, lemon juice, and like an onion. <laughs> it's like, that is not a taco. Fuck you. I hate you. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm. So spicy, don't you like? It's so good. Isn't that mm. great? It's like there's no better mm. food in the world. Thanks, Juliana. <laughs> this has been great. 
anyways, the kid, he doesn't want to take his drugs anymore because he's like, I, I'm going to die anyways. I don't yep. care. I don't want my, my drugs. Uh, I hate you, Mom, or whatever. Cough, um, cough. At least take your meds. I'm going to stop taking the pills. Honey, they're helping you get better. I don't even know what happens. We cut. I don't remember how we get there. We cut from like him telling his mom he doesn't want to take drugs anymore. He might like run out or something because then we cut to an alleyway. Yes. He's just in this alleyway hitting on like three random girls. Yes. Sinners. Yes. This scene is fucking insane too. I was like, what is this? So she, she's like, his mom's going up to be like, you don't know how, the, look, you don't know how really sick you actually are. Yeah, you're are. like, you're dying of cancer. And so he's walking the kid down this alley, I guess to a parking lot or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like where she parked or something. Like Anyways, that. as they're going, she's explaining what she does yeah. as if she were explaining this to like a coworker. It's a new load of chimps I'm inspecting. The senior $600,000 man, not to mention his name, but heads, kids are sick. They have the flu. I'm sitting him down, grossly humiliating him just within the confines of the law. Yeah, yeah, she's like and not her nine-year-old son. No, but she works for the pharmaceutical company. She does testing or whatever for the. So she's and this, by the way, this movie. The implication of all this is that it's her fault. Her kid has cancer. Like it's that's what this so movie is saying. God. It's like it's your fault if your kid has oh. cancer and is dying. It's your fault. Spoilers. Well, I will fight this movie, Kyle. I will fucking fight this movie. <laughs> fight this fucking movie. Woo! God. Oh. Meanwhile, Simon has now run away. Mm -hmm. or he escaped or something. He's out on the street. Well, and, no, he was never captured. Oh no, yeah. She, yeah. she took. She like she, got ran away with him. Yeah. I don't know what. So now she. Should be on the run because she. But she's not with them. Yeah. Simon's by himself because he comes across a homeless man <laughs> sleeping on the street yes. and wakes up. And this scene's actually amazing. I was kind of hoping that we'd have like a road trip of this monkey who yeah, just with that guy travels just around like, yeah, and, and just gets be... It'd be like Ryan's babe, but with a chimp. Yeah, it would be amazing. It would have been amazing. But he comes across this guy, and I love the guy wakes up and he's like, "Oh, you, you're not wearing any clothes, man. Here, have my coat." Regardless, you can't get out like this. You gotta get some clothes on you. We see you. you know, get your butt in jail, pronto. <laughs> it's like super cute. It's whatever. But then he takes him. Oh my God, Kyle. To a massage parlor, right? He takes him to a massage parlor. We don't see any of this. They come walking out. He is on. He is. He is uh, fucking on both sides. On each arm, he has a, a woman mm. that are implied to be sex workers. Mm. Don't forget, my name's Cherry. I'm Crystal. He says, "I swear to God." He says. Or no, they say, wait, where'd it go? Can you imagine having to whack that man? And the other one goes, he is no man, he's it's an, an animal. animal. He was no man, he was an animal. The implication in this scene is that both of them are so dumb, right? Or, or well, what well, are, I don't care what the implication, the implication is that they fucked the chimpanzee, Kyle. The implication is that yes. both of them fucked a chimpanzee. Yes. He was no man. He was an animal. And they couldn't tell? <laughs> and they, well, yes, well, the they couldn't tell or didn't care or, I don't, they fucked the chimp, Kyle, they fucked a chimpanzee in this kid's movie. The joke is that two adult women fucked a chimpanzee in this kid's movie. Okay. That's what happens in, they fucked the chimpanzee. <laughs> Can I find something to hide behind? <sighs> Little, little <sighs> he was no man. He was an animal. Um. <laughs> anyways, we got we got we got to get to the point where Riley and uh, the mom I don't know her name uh, Albert's mom bumps into Riley in a mm -hmm. parking lot. They know each other. Okay, Kyle. How do you think they know each other? Did you gather how they? Because this is a whole other thing. Mm -mm. Blow my mind because right now nothing else is making okay. sense. Okay, so they bump into each other in this in this parking lot, and they seem to know each other. And there's this energy between them that, to me, 
read as former lovers. Really, you? That's how it read to me. Was like, she's like, they kind of hug and they're like, oh my God, it's been so, uh, how you, uh, but, it, but there's like this weird tension, like this weird sexual tension. It's really good to see you. I thought about you a lot. But then she goes, how old, oh God, what is the line? You know, I knew you when you were just a baby. You weren't much older yourself. I wasn't much older than Albert is now when we last saw each or something like that. Something like that. There's some weird line. And then the mo and then and then Riley says, You know, I knew you when you were just a baby. You weren't much older yourself. I was after you were through with me. I was after you were through with me. Or something like that. And I don't know what what what, what does that mean? I could not tell if the implication, because it goes two ways. One of them, okay, you did it weird. One of them is like she was our babysitter or something. Like his okay. mom was like her babysitter, and that would make sense. Like, oh, you know, you were young. I took care of you, and when we were when you were through with me, like you, you, you like taught me the way. You know, like you, not, like you were, okay. you know, yeah, you were yeah, like my babysitter, yeah, and like you weren't much older yourself. I was after you were through with me. You like helped raise me or whatever. Uh, the opposite way is a lot darker. The other end, and it, that's how it reads to me. That the implication is that she statutorily did terrible things. I don't know. It's really good to see you. I thought about you a lot. You weren't much older yourself. I was after you were through with me. Kyle, nothing in this movie would surprise me. With the way, with this movie, nothing. Brian, you need a Xanax. I need so many Xanax. <laughs> That's right, just all at once. I'm very sweaty. <laughs> Call me tonight. I almost had an aneurysm <laughs> watching this movie this morning, Kyle. I, I okay. So I watch uh, spoilers for not, not really spoilers, but, but the last ten minutes of this movie were the most insane fucking thing I have ever seen. It's really crazy. I don't even agree because I think the whole the movie is, but the, like the, the whole movie's the same. But the end of it is like a shotgun blast it's, of insanity. It's wild. Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. It's very clearly, oh my God, we have two hours to film the last 40 minutes of this movie. Let's do it mm. in six minutes or whatever. <laughs> also, I have to talk about, she explains to her, to Riley, oh, Albert's got cancer and he's dying. Albert's sick. He has cancer and it's spread. He's gonna die. And Riley goes, "Oh no, he'll be fine." Yeah, he just literally do yoga, just yoga, and, and eat raw, raw food. food. Miranda, listen closely to me. There's a way to fully regenerate his body in six months. No dangerous procedures, just yoga and raw food. <laughs> she even says he's got three weeks to live. Well, after two weeks of yoga and raw food, man. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He'll be fine. He'll be great. She says, she also says in this conversation, Riley goes, did you know that heating things up is how they make plastic? Simple. You know they make plastic? They heat up oil. It's the exact way that humans eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And when you heat up food, it's like the same thing. And I'm like, oh my wow. God, I will fucking <laughs> fight you. I will fucking fight. I will fight you. I will come here. I will find you and I will fight you. I would pay, I would pay. Page, new Patreon goal. Uh, title bouts. I will. I will go. To, I will go into octagon with every with person Gi involved. Giuliano. <laughs> every person involved in this movie. I will go into the octagon. And I don't even care if I lose. I. I just want to punch them at least once. Each person that made this oh movie. God. <laughs> then she has this banger of a line. She fucking says, "This is the one I talked. We were talking about before we even started filming." <laughs> Without doctors and dentists, animals out in nature live in perfect condition. Without doctors and dentists, wild animals, they live in perfect condition. Bullshit! Bull fucking shit! Bullshit! Have you ever watched a single nature documentary <laughs> yes. in your entire dumb fucking life? <laughs> I, like, what are you talking? 
Have you ever even walked outside? Animals live significantly longer in captivity. Yes! In almost every regard. Yes! Yes! Because they don't get fucking killed by things, and they don't, like... They don't parasite. Well, generally, they don't have parasites. But yeah, like in captivity. Ch- chimpanzees, yeah. Yeah. Th- like, in nature, they'll live for, like, maybe 15 years and shit, because... The stuff they're eating, there's you know, uh, tribal warfare and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many things that kill them yeah. in captivity. They're generally that's, okay. That's not even a pro. I'm not even making a pro argument for like, should we keep chimpanzees? Chimpanzees and but mm-hmm. like just just the pure just, idea just the that statement. like being in nature, like animals are like fine and never they're like fine. They don't no. have dentists and doctors. Without doctors and dentists, wild animals they live in perfect condition. I will fucking. Fight you. I mean, I, even, I, even look, look at, look at humans before we develop like modern medicine, cleanliness, soap, and all that crap. Yes. Our average life expectancy was like thirty-five years. Everybody died from their teeth, mm. like always, <laughs> like forever. <laughs> I, I when she said that line, I, I, my, my soul left my body. <laughs> it just, it, it, it fucking ejected Ugh. out of my, out of my body, and I, oh my god. The only fundamental difference between us and other species is they're raw and we're cooked. Riley, cooked food didn't give my little boy cancer. They live in perfect condition. No animals in nature die ever, Kyle. What are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're all fine. Right. This this person's understanding of nature is like they watched a Disney movie when they were like yes. three, and that's that's it. Everywhere outside of where she is right now is the nice farm family that her pet went to go. Live. Oh my god! Yeah, literally, that's the thing. Yes, she must think. That like that's I I don't even know how you could exist. <laughs> how you, how does this person get dressed in the morning if you think <laughs> that animals in nature are just like they don't need they're fine they all live forever like they're just fine like there's no pro, there's no disease there's no nothing it's fine I was like <laughs> oh my god without doctors and dentists wild animals they live in perfect condition. Meanwhile I don't know how we get there we cut to Riley uh, the worst person on the planet. Um, <laughs> Is <laughs> in the woods doing yoga with the chimpanzee. Yes, and the chimp just walks off. <laughs> just walks away, and Sinclair just stumbles across them in the middle of the woods with a blow dart gun. Pew, pew. And, and blow darts the chimpanzee, and then <laughs> to get it out of the he, woods. Okay, okay. <laughs> he wraps a rope around its foot feet. And drags it behind. On, what what is he driving? Like a like, like a, a little, gator or yeah. whatever, like those like four wheeler. Like it has a truck yes. bed. Why would you like? It's literally just he's that evil. Like that's all it is. Is like he does he. But it. But here's the thing. His whole thing is he wants to kill it. Yeah. Why doesn't why he, he kill just it fucking then? kill it? Please, please. But he's gonna kill Simon. You've got to do something. I don't know, man. I don't understand. Because, uh, yeah, we find out later the whole plot, and we'll get to the end. But, like, the whole thing is, like, he wants to kill this one monk or this one chimpanzee because it will ruin his whole operation or whatever. But, yeah, he doesn't kill it here. He just drags it behind his car or his his fucking (laughs) four-by-four. It's so stupid. Simon, Simon's cat, she, she carjacks a guy. She assaults a random guy on the street. She punches him in the nuts and takes his car and drives away. I need your car. No way. And I was like, what is happening? What is happening? But Simon's now captured. Yes, uh, then we cut back to, she takes, uh, the mom takes Albert to work. Mm-hmm. And I love this scene this where he's talking <laughs> to the receptionist. The receptionist making her real sad. What's the matter? You sound so gloomy. Well, I just found out that my prognosis for a painful early death will now involve lethal doses of radiation. My hair will fall out and I'll soon become too weak for school. <laughs> this movie is also child abuse. The making of this movie is child abuse. This kid delivers these crazy monologues about how, like, <laughs> radiation is, like... What does he say? He says something. He's, he's like, giving this terrible monologue about how he's going to die, and it's all terrible. Well, anyway, I'll quit school and retreat to the hospital and die a radioactive death by nine. If I'm lucky. It'll be okay. 
and it's all worse because he's gonna go he's got to go get radiation treatment and what radiation treatment is they give you lethal doses of radiation lethal doses of radiation and like literally it's the opposite of that yes that's the point of radiation treatment yes. is they do not give you ra <laughs> lethal doses of radiation i mean they do in the sense of like it kills the, the, certain things yeah but not you <laughs> like yes. that's fucking how it works you're not being euthanized kid none of these people know how anything works nobody knows how it, none of these, it's fucking you great. say none of these people all the words are written by one man yeah right? sorry well but but they all deliver these lines i, I don't know. know man some of these okay because there was time where i was like because i actually had the feeling that like a lot of the people probably got suckered into this movie because on the surface you could pitch this movie to people and be like oh it's a fun light-hearted family romp about a kid who gets who has cancer and then makes friends with a chimpanzee and they like grow together and like and it's also about like um, not like, you know, not, uh, like not doing like medical experiments on chimpanzees. You get a lot of people with that. Be like, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, sure, great. And then like, oh, by the way, it's an anti-vax movie. Raw food is the only, if you eat cooked food, you'll literally get cancer and die. Mm -hmm. And they're like, whoa. But a lot of the actors in this movie fucking say these lines with a straight face. I don't like. There's a way to fully regenerate his body in six months. No dangerous procedures, just yoga and raw food. I think at least Riley, that actress, mm -hmm. There's no way she doesn't buy into this at least a little bit to deliver the lines in this movie. I I couldn't do yeah, it. You would you would have to kill me. I would like you would have to have a gun. They were describing off shampoo and conditioner yes. uh, naturally. <laughs> shampoo is honey. Put go ahead. Put honey in your hair. See what yes. happens. Better yet, you can use natural ingredients like honey, a shampoo. She goes oh because yeah they they show up and she's like giving her all these like replacing all of her products with natural mm. products and she goes instead of shampoo just use honey. Literally just honey. Just rub it in your hair. What about hair conditioner? Just a little lemon juice and warm water. Your hair will be silky smooth, I promise. We also get a chimp conversation. God. <laughs> They're locked in a cave. Oh. Also, we haven't talked about the chimp costumes. They are human beings yes. in chimp costumes that are actually really good. Mm -hmm. Like, relatively speaking. Like, they look pretty good. Yeah, convincing. they have, like, mechanical... The, 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 clearly, it's mechanical components in these yes. masks. But they move pretty... Convincing. Yes, so I looked this up because I was like, these cannot be for this movie. And I don't think they are. So, like, mm. there's this company, and I don't know if there's this exact one, but there's a company in, like, L.A. called Animated Effects that rents, like, animatronic chimpanzee costumes that look pretty similar to this these ones where you have, like, a, a gymnast in the costume doing, like, the, the movement and stuff, and then the whole face is animatronic. Mm. And then they wear special contact lenses to make their eyes look less human obviously mm -hmm. um and i think that's what they're using in this because you there's other movies that have used these yeah. same well like, if you costumes. notice in the, in the credits all the chimps are played by the same person yes and and there's like multiple puppeteers for them mm -hmm. like they have like so yeah they're like animatronic and they look pretty good like i said it, as like you know chimp costume compared to some things yeah they, it, yeah well the, the head looks good yes but that's because it's like completely crafted the body is like it's a, it's a it's a patchy it's a morph suit, suit with yeah. fur. Yeah, okay. it's not I ideal. But anyways, they're in these cages, and these two chimpanzees are chatting uh, with each other. One of them's Bruce Lee. Yeah, what the fuck was that? It's like I'm Bruce Lee. I... Apparently monkeys or chimpanzees can watch movies and, and know who Bruce Lee is. <laughs> and then I love we have one line. They take one of them into uh, the mom takes the one of the chimpanzees in to do some tests on mm -hmm. it or whatever. And I love they get in there and she goes, she says she turns. I don't know if it's a, a, her assistant or whatever. And it's like, give me some babies. Got a few things I want to try. And like, the guy you know goes, what she's wanting to try. How many babies? And she goes, maybe half a half dozen. dozen. How many you want? Half dozen. <laughs> I need to give them cancer so I can figure out how to save my son. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. But it's so stupid. It's just give me some babies. I gotta try something. Albie's got the food thing covered. So. Oh, but there's so much more to it than that. We have to check the medicine cabinets underneath the sink. Everything needs to be replaced with non-toxic alternatives from the health food store. Uh, we talked about how the... Um, the, the part where they replace all this stuff, but they also make almond milk for like 10 minutes. <laughs> They're like, yes. here's how you make almond milk. You put water and almonds and honey in a blender. Ooh, it's so delicious. What do you think? <laughs> oh my God. I know. Are you kidding? It's amazing. It's like, I've had almond milk. It's not that no. delicious. No. It's fine. It's fine. Oh God. Oat milk's better than almond milk. Fucking, if you're gonna replace your milk, get oat milk. It's way better. 
so many so many comments now about which milk substitute is the best. <laughs> all our comment section is just people fighting over oat milk versus almond milk Jeez. versus uh, soy milk. Isn't this lifestyle just too hard? It was for about the first week during transition, but now I don't know how I looked the other way before at all. And then she leaves that scene and she wants to go save. Yes. And so she goes out in the backyard. Yes. And she recruits the kid. Children? Yes. I could use a guide to the lab and you are pretty small. I'll pick you up at eight. Check. Children, literal like eight year olds to break into this pharmaceutical company with her. Mm. Great, that's the hero of our movie. Yeah. <laughs> is recruiting children to, to do like fucking and, 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 and not just being espionage. Like, hey, get me your mom's name tag or something like that. Yeah, no, it's you're gonna come with me. Well, well, because originally she goes, just give me your mom's name tag so I can break in, and then the the girl who's there with him is like, we want to come with you. Both go or no deal. You need us and you know it. And and she's like, no, and they're like, but I want to come. She's like, okay, I guess you can. That's yeah, fine. <laughs> I have some cool spy stuff I can bring too. And we're little, so we can fit through any bars. Also, they have a line where they're like, they if you ever look on the back of a toothpaste thing, the amount of toothpaste you use, if you swallow it, you have to contact poison control immediately. Do you know when kids toothpaste, on the back it says, keep out of reach of children. What? Yeah, the amount you use when you brush your teeth, if you swallow it, they say to contact poison control immediately. That no. is not true! No. Maybe if you eat the whole tube of toothpaste, yeah, yes. probably, but not like, well, a, like They're not ah. gonna sell you a that poison of a product. No, it's too much it's liability. So <laughs> it's so stupid. I was like, there's no way that's true. Oh my god. Also, the kids kiss. We watch the kids kiss. It's so weird. Under the in the mm -hmm. pool. Why is it in the movie? Ah, it's so strange. So yeah, they break into the laboratory. Uh, with the two kids, and then they get they break Albert out, or not Albert, uh, Simon. Simon, and uh, she just like effort effortlessly slices the tracking chip out of its neck. Yes, <laughs> she's like, yes, boom, we're good. Go Let's on. get out right, of here. Good. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I don't remember what happens, but the, the the director of the movie shows up for a second. Yes, he's a detective. Yeah, he's like detective something. What is the context of this scene though? This isn't I, the final scene yet. No, I don't. know. Anyway. I, I think it's that they found out that Simon's missing, and they're like, we gotta. Uh, she's, yeah. she's stolen my property. We right. need to figure out where she's at. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Don't you have a son? Yeah. I have a little boy who's terminally ill with only weeks to live. You think he stole a 450 pound vicious rabid beast? Meanwhile, Albert's uh, explaining to his mom that they need real food. It comes from the earth or a tree, not from a tin can or a factory. What do you want to eat, Albert? We need real food, Mom. It comes from the earth or a tree, not a tin can or factory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then, I, I, like I said, I literally forgot this was supposed to be 1997. I was reminded because we get a news report and they're like, Princess Diana is dead. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, it's 1997. Holy shit. And then they have like a news report again about how the FDA found that everything is cancer or whatever. Have discovered that a cancer causing chemical known as acrylamide is in practically all processed foods. And also I was like, why do they trust the FDA in this context? These seem like the kind of people who would be like the FDA is lying to us. But apparently the mm -hmm. FDA is like, everything causes cancer and just told us that and that's true. And they believe that, but they also believe everybody else is. I don't understand how that works, but whatever. And then my favorite scene, literally my favorite scene in this movie, is the mom Googling things. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's incredible. So she, she's Google, or well, Googling, she, whatever. whatever she would be using. Yeah, yeah. She's Googling all this stuff and is like looking at all this, all these products that yeah. she has. <laughs> One of them, I, I thought, I honestly thought it was like drain cleaner. At one point. It's like, I, it might have been, yeah. But it's uh, like, well, yeah, that might cause stuff. cancer. Who and cares? She, she, she's like, if only I would have known. Yes. What have I been doing to my child? She's like <laughs> sobbing, just Googling things and finding out they cause cancer. And then my favorite is she picks up her box of cigarettes, cigarettes and chucks it. And she looks at the label yeah. and it's like, cancer and, and she's like, it's like what and it's like you didn't know cigarettes cause it's 1997 That's not only 1897 yes. what the fuck is going oh, on God. <sighs> somebody says according to the fda the ingredients used in food are 98 percent carcinogenic you know i looked up the ingredients used in the food served in schools 
and hospitals and cancer wards. According to the FDA, they're 98% carcinogenic. It's like, what does that mean? 98% of the ingredients in food are carcinogenic? They're 98% cancer cut. Don't want to explain that at all. Just say that. Whatever. <laughs> a little kid runs into the woods to meet up with uh, Simon and Riley hiding mm -hmm. out there, and they make him some food, and it's literally just a leaf with honey and a flower on top. <laughs> it looks so stupid. Oh, it's amazing. Um, also, and I mentioned earlier, the color grade on this movie is atrocious. Mm -hmm. They they turn the saturation and contrast mm -hmm. so far up yes. that people's skin is like yes, it's like glowing. glowing. It's, <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. I was like, maybe that's what's causing the cancer. <laughs> it's the fucking saturation boost you have on your fucking. Uh... I don't know what I was going with that. I'm done. Um... <laughs> we need to get back to the lab. I'm sorry, we've already asked so much of you, but there is something else. So uh, then they want to get the other chimp out, and this is where we get to the yeah. big climax. Well, like we've we've had a situation where the, the mom is asking. We have nine minutes to wrap this up. <laughs> uh, make this real quick. Okay. The mom is asking uh, the kid uh, Albert, you know, where, where have you been? Why have you been out all day? It's like, oh, just hanging out with my friends and stuff. Okay, your mom still believes that you have like a day or two to live. Yeah, yeah. Like, and she's okay. just like, whatever, yeah, go do whatever you go, want. Go do I don't want thing. to spend time with my dying child. Uh, <laughs> Is this the part where they're back at the hospital? Well, this is where they... Yeah. So anyways, they go back to the hospital. Doesn't matter. They go back to the hospital mm -hmm. and they're getting some more tests. And at this point, I don't know how long he's supposed to have been taking Yeah. the whole... It so, seems like a day or two. Something like that. They're just giving him the full battery of tests and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, there's like, the remission's compl it's like it's almost completely gone. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. It's impossible that this drastic of a, a, a remission could take place. Oh. He's like mad. I love yes. the doctor's like angry that this kid no longer has cancer. Cancer that spreads every part of the body can't possibly be cured in a couple of months without medical treatment. He's yes. like, this is fucking bullshit. That kid should be dying. I hate this. Um, but and yeah, the mother on the way out is like, you're just upset that you can't uh, you can't make money off of selling whatever yeah. poison and stuff. Yeah, it's like, oh come god. On. An apple a day really does keep the doctor away. It's just one problem with that, isn't there? You can't sell it. I will again. I will fight you, movie. I will fucking fight you. Um, but yeah, so I then I got another Steven Seagal line. Yeah. Well, they're in the business of treating you. I'm in the business of curing you. That's that's the whole that's the whole ethos of this or the whole fucking uh, point of this movie. That's literally the thesis of this film. According to the FDA, they're 98 percent carcinogenic. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's terrible. I bet I do bet Steven Seagal fucking loved this movie. That would have been an amazing cameo <laughs> if at the end Steven Seagal showed up and beat up uh, the bad guy <laughs> and punched. He that would have made this ending so much better. Steven Seagal Seagal shows up and punches that guy and punches the not racism but the fucking evil uh, animal torturing out of him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steven Seagal changes immediately and goes, "What does it take to change a man? What does it take?" What does it take to change the essence of a man? The essence of a man, I believe, is the exact line. <laughs> and the guy goes, I need time to change. Time. You know what? You're right. And <laughs> what the Steven Seagal just punched the racism out of that guy. Anyways, they go back. They got to break into the We have six and a half minutes. They go to break into the lab to steal the other chimpanzee, yes. the, the, the one that was still there. Um, and they get inside, and while they're there, the um, the chi they get the door off. Like they they, the uh, Albert rips the door off, and then it just dies. The other chimp yes, just dies. It just dies. It's like, hey, thanks. Ugh. Uh, I'm free. Uh, I'm dead. Then they <laughs> they get in there, uh, and the villain shows up. Yes, every, everyone just shows up. He's there. every every character, everybody every everyone character, just shows except up for the now. doctor. <laughs> From the hospital, yes, which would have been great. great if he's like, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. But uh, they're like, you got to arrest these people. Yes, and, and they're stealing my chimpanzees. Exactly. They're mine. I own them. They're also trespassing. Yes. Arrest these people. These criminals. These terrorists. I mean, they broke into yeah, this this our, our private building. Yeah. Uh, so so he's telling the. He, 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 
He gives chase to the black detective. Oh my god! <laughs> it says, put Arrest that, mon- that monkey in chains. Yes. Put that monkey in chains. And the mo- the chimpanzee goes over to a whiteboard. He puts on the marker. What, what, what are you, Simon? What are you, Simon? Tell them what you are. Free. Free. Man. man. <laughs> and then the one black guy in this whole movie is like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. fucking wild. Wrong. It. No. He just wrote free man. I am not chaining him up. <laughs> it's so wild. Oh my god. <sighs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. And then and then they're like, all right, well, we got to uh, no, it's his. And then he they, he goes over. They're like, get everybody to the side. And like uh, the other detective and like his the other cop there, mm-hmm. like shuffle them to the side. And the bad guy walks up and starts tasing the monkey yes. with a quasar. Did you see? That's a fucking uh, light. That is a so quasar is like a type of light. I'm like, yeah. movie set. That was 100 percent. They just ripped that out of the grip truck. And we're like, there you go. <laughs> like, nice. it's a fu- it's, it looks like it's got prongs. Want some of it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's what that is. It's amazing. The dad shows up randomly and he's like, You gotta fight. You gotta fight. Yes, yeah. He goes, Go on. The dad shows up and he's like, Oh, you're gonna arrest her? What are you gonna do? Arrest her for love and compassion? So go ahead. Arrest a girl who's trying to save an animal who wants to live in a world that wants to die. Come on. Arrest her for love and compassion. <laughs> what in the fuck? That's why this, 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 this movie is fucking crazy. <laughs> Dialogue is amazing, but but and then he gets a call. The other cop, yes. the, uh, you're, you're being indicted for what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. He gets a call. Yeah, uh, you're indicted. I just got a call randomly that you're arrested. I don't know. Look, I'm not the criminal here, Doctor Sinclair. I just got a call from headquarters. There's an indictment for your arrest. What? I don't know, whatever. And so they go to arrest the bad guy, Sinclair. Mm -hmm. And as they're going to do it, uh, Albert walks up, or the Simon walks up and is like looking at him and they're like, he wants to shake your hand. He wants to shake hands, Sinclair. Don't be afraid. And I'm like, D- does he? Okay. And then he shakes his hand and he shakes the evil out he of him. He shakes the evil out. <laughs> You, you feel? It, 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 it literally, this is it's, it's a six-year-old's concept of, of a heel-turned face. Yes! It, it's it's like... Oh, and my, by the way, he just sleep-darted a guy. Yes. <laughs> I forgot, he fucking shot a sleep-dart no, into no. the other cop oh, that God. was there. Take it Okay, but uh, he shakes his hand. He's like, and the, the revelation is like, oh no, these horrible things I've done. Yeah. You're right, I am an evil bastard. I am an evil I can guy. change my ways. Cute little monkeys. Who knew? Yep. He goes over, takes a sleep dart out. That sleep dart hit with such force, <laughs> it dislocated his shoulder. Um, I'm a doctor. A good doctor. I want to help him with his arm. I think it's out of socket. <laughs> and then we get a we get a fucking breakfast club clothes love like where yes. are they now over the credits. Dr. Sinclair still went to trial and was sentenced. But I heard he got out early for good behavior. Where they're like, Mom, my mom and Riley opened a veterinary clinic. I was like, I bet they did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the fucking um My mom and Riley, they're still friends. You weren't much older yourself. I was after you went through with me. Uh, Sinclair was arrested, but was released but on good behavior. Yeah, because he's a good guy now. Uh, and then the chimps got released into like a nature preserve or yes. whatever where they're living. We're all happy. Woohoo! With the, the only end. footage of an actual monkey we have in. Oh I my say, god! A chimp that we have in the whole movie. Yes, and then the. <laughs> And then the music, the credits roll, and the music plays. And the music, it's like a custom song for this movie called, like, Simon Says or something like God. that. It's amazing. And also on Tubi, where this movie is, the credits just, just stop. stop. <laughs> Look in the sky, touching out. They just stop. It just we're halfway through the credits and it, it just ends. It's like, so okay. This movie 
it's is good, insane. Bad. It's insane bad. Like, it's, it's also bad bad because I hate it and nobody should ever watch it. But it's good bad because it made I, me so, so mad. If, if you just watch like the first 20 minutes to get all your establishing oh and just fast forward to the last 10 minutes, your brain will just implode. If you're at all a rational human being, you will hate this And it's movie. insanely <laughs> short. It's only like 75 minutes. It's an hour minutes. and 15 minutes, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. That's the other thing that makes it good bad for me is that it's so short. But I... I uh, hated everything about. Oh, we got two minutes. Two We're minutes. perfect. Oh, Sweet. Hated everything about this movie, but I will say good, bad, but also never watch this. Burn, burn it. <laughs> also, if you made this movie, let's fight. Let's call me up. We'll that's, that's fight. Brian throwing down. I'm, I'm like, uh, like in a safe way. I don't want to actually do violence. I just mean like with some boxing gloves for charity. Or, we can or, donate it to Chimpanzee Rescue. I'm down. Let's do it. Or uh, <laughs> ro- a Rumble Robots, whatever the. Oh rock yeah, Rockham Sockham, Sockham yeah. Robot. Yeah, let's do that instead. Yep. That's better. <laughs> I'll get my ass kicked. I don't fight, I won't fight anybody. Are you kidding me? Uh, 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 as always, you can just subscribe to hang over to patreon.com slash uh, GB Review for support us yes. there for two, five, fifteen bucks a month. You get access to different stuff. Uh, tpublic.com, search for uh, Good, Better, Bad, Bad, Quantum Physics. You'll find our stuff. Um, I have a podcast called This One's where we're talking about movies that are based on books. When this is out, I don't know what's out because we're too far ahead and also I have like 30 seconds of uh, We stuff. have Twitch. We have Twitch. Twitch stuff. Look, oh my God, look at all the Twitch All stuff. the stuff. You could do that. Uh, that's it. The end. Um, until next time, keep watching movies. Especially Amazing Eight. But also, don't watch it ever. Yeah. It's the worst. But also, it's great. Watch it. But also, <laughs> don't. Don't take any scientific advice from <laughs> Amazing Eight. Refer, but also, refer to your own doctor for your own health. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>